Ready, front. Sir, right, present class 803 for graduation. Ladies and gentlemen, I ask that you remain standing. We will now have a rendition of the national anthem, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Command, class, detail, ready, peace. Present. pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order! Hoo. Command, class, detail, ready, front, uncover, two. We will now begin the ceremony with an invocation given by the Most Reverend William E. Laurie, Archbishop of Baltimore. Let us pray. O God, our Father, our protector, and constant guide in times of peril and in moments of greatest need, we call down your spirit upon these men and women their families, their loved ones, and their friends, and indeed upon us all. Embrace these new officers with your abiding love and care, and sustain them as now they accept your call to demonstrate the greatest love of all, to lay down one's life for another. Keep them safe in their comings and their goings, and enlighten their judgments and decisions. Enable them to see the dignity and sanctity of every human life, every person they encounter. Those who are desperate and in the grip of addiction, those who are the victims of violence, those who have lost their way and regard criminal life as their only option, those who live without joy and hope. May these, your sons and daughters, who now take up the responsibility to enforce the laws of our society among their fellow citizens, may they do so with utmost care and always with the inclination to serve, protect, and bring about peace. We give you thanks for the gift of their lives and for their desire to serve you and we ask you to help them as they strive to make our city safe. Sanctify and give joy to our work in all that we say and do. May we make evident your great and unconditional love. And we make this prayer in thy holy name. Amen. Amen. Command, class, detail. Ready, seats. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time it is my honor and privilege to introduce the ex officio mayor of the great city of Baltimore, Bernard C. Jack Young. 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Commissioner Harrison, Captain Sean Brown, Baltimore Police Department officers, families, and friends. And I'll be remiss if I didn't say I want to uh, thank our State's Attorney, State's Attorney Marilyn Mosby, for joining us. It is indeed a privilege for me to be here to see another successful graduating class of the Baltimore Police Department. Though this great accomplishment you all have set a course to further strengthening the conditions of Baltimore City. And for this, I applaud and congratulate each of you representing the Baltimore Police Department graduation class of 1803. To all of the family, friends, and instructors that have challenged, encouraged, inspired, laughed, and cried with these men and women, supporting them through this process, thank you for your commitment. To the class of 1803, you have chosen an influential profession, and you will become part of communities throughout Baltimore City. Residents will look to you for safety, support, and service. At this time, now more than any, are your roles vital to our city. I'm confident that the training you have received and will continue to receive will cause you to become positive pillars within Baltimore City. Remain steadfast to your commitment and glean from your mentors and tenured te leaders within the Baltimore Police Department. There remains a lot of each of you to learn, so ask questions and seek advice as often as you can. Be intentional about your own learning process. Be intentional about becoming a trusted member of the community. Each of you are expected to continue raising the standards of the police department. Do this by serving Baltimore City through constitutional policing and allowing your eagerness to be guided by the values of dignity and respect for self and others. I share the confidence of Commissioner Harrison in your ability to fulfill your duties. I believe in you, so did the community believe in you. And we want you to make sure that you treat the community just like you would treat your own families. Walk up to them, say hello, how you doing today, and you'll be surprised the reaction you'll get from some of the citizens in Baltimore. I met three officers who are graduating today. When I was walking back from um, the, um, uh, what they call it, Mr. Commissioner, 8 o'clock in the morning. The VRI. The VRI meeting. <laughs> and they were um, excited to see me. Would, would the three of you please stand up? Y'all remember what I told you, right? And I spoke from the heart. I didn't have a script. And I told you what the expectations are, and you all agreed. Now, I want you all to remember that the citizens of Baltimore, 99.9% .9 of them are good people. And if you treat them with dignity and respect, you will get that same respect back. That's all I'm asking you to do is treat the citizens with dignity and respect and try your best to live in Baltimore City. Because when you live here, we'll be able to give you all those good raises that you want. And I've already spoken to developers as early as today about giving some discounts to officers to live in the city of Baltimore. We have a, a, a what they call a tax credit. If you want to buy a home, up to $2,500 off your tax bills. So again, thank you three, because you, uh, you made me feel good that you wanted to take a picture with me and talk to me. Um, I'm just like you. I'm no better than you. I work for you. If you live in the city of Baltimore, I work for you. So I never forget that. And I have real humble beginnings. You see me on the street, you can talk to me. I go to, go to the um, roll calls and I tell the officers, if you have something on your mind, feel free to say it to me. Feel free to talk to me because I want to make things better for you. And in closing, congratulations and may God bless you. Thank you, Mayor Young. At this time, it is my honor and privilege to introduce to you the Commissioner of the Baltimore Police Department, Commissioner Michael Harrison. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the graduation of Baltimore Police Department's Recruit Class 1803. Thank you, Mayor Young, for your leadership. Thank you, Archbishop Laurie, for that prayer and for your support of our work. Thank you to all of our elected officials who are here for your continued support. Our state's attorney and U.S. attorney, thank you. It means a lot to all of us that you're here. To our executive and command staff, thank you for the work you do and the sacrifices you make. It means a lot that all of you are here to support these men and women as they now join us in a life of public service. 
to the family and friends and loved ones of these graduating recruits, a very special welcome to you to this academy graduation. This is a special day for the class of 1803. And so it has been your family and your friends, your support systems that got you to this point. It will be your family and those support systems that will carry you through your career when the days are hard and the nights are long and it's dangerous and you have stories to tell. It will be these people who will listen to you and help you prepare to come back for the next day. So at this time, I want to thank you and you should thank your family and friends for the support that they're going to give you for the rest of your career. I want a special thank you to the recruitment team and the academy staff who are responsible for getting you through the hiring process and training you, which leads us to this day. And will all the members of our academy staff please stand and be recognized for the work that's been done to prepare these people for this day? We are extremely proud and excited that you're graduating today. I am especially proud because like you, I've become a part of a new family. Though you're just beginning your career and I am in the twilight of mine, all of us made a decision to choose Baltimore to call home and choose Baltimore to call our family. I'm also proud and excited because at a time when so many people are saying and so many people are thinking, that's not what I want to do. The 29 of you stepped up and said, not only is that what I want to do, not only is that what I should do, but this is what I'm called to do. Now is the time that I'm called, here is the place I'm called to be. This profession, this noble work, this pursuit of truth and goodness, this honorable duty, that is a journey that most people cannot do, most people will not do. This journey and duty that many will never understand is a journey that most cannot take because it is reserved for those of us who have been called to it and those of us who have accepted it. It's my hope that this journey brings you as much pride as satisfaction and fulfillment as it has brought me and all of us who love this department and love this profession. You're still a citizen, but more importantly, you're now a law enforcement officer. And this is so much more than just a graduation. Today is about the growth, the maturity, and the evolution of a police department and a city. So while recruitment, hiring, and training of police officers is vitally important, it's not the size of your class that impresses us, but rather the size of your commitment that makes you so special today. For the past 38 weeks, we've been hard, we've made it hard, so you could be the best. And make no mistake about it, we will be the best police department in all of America. You've worked through hard professional and personal hardships, and now we embrace you as you now enter into our profession. So being a police officer is a lot of things. It's a profession, you've heard me say. It's a calling. It's your employment. And it's as noble and honorable as any profession or any calling. The one thing it is not is a job. Because if you ever look at this calling, this noble profession, as just your job, you will have lost respect for this nobility and the amazing responsibility and gift that God himself has given to you. Our nobility is founded upon the premise that we would willingly take on the most challenging and dangerous situations on behalf of people we don't even know. This calling means we move toward danger rather than away from it, that when they call, we come. But it also requires you to have the balance of unwavering coverage when we need it, but then having the compassion and sensitivity to handle the most precious and delicate of all situations. And when it comes to community, it's never us against them because we are a part of the community we serve. So while at times the public might take things personal, you should not. So as you get dressed every day, remember that you represent far more than you, you represent far more than your family, you represent an entire profession. You represent a city and a police department that the country is watching. But when I say that the country is watching the BPD, I say that because although we're under a federal consent decree, which means we are under a federal mandate to reform our department, we are on the way to becoming what Baltimore Police Department should have always been and what it was always meant to be. 
I envision a day not too far away where we will be the policing leaders in this country in technology, transparency, accountability, community engagement, best practices, innovation, and reform. And along with borrowing and implementing the newest and best thing from somewhere else, we're on the way to creating the newest and best thing, shaping how police and police management are done in this country. And so you represent honorable men and women who have served before you, some of whom have paid the ultimate sacrifice. So as you serve and protect the community, remember to always protect the profession and keep sacred your solemn oath. So now I'm charging you to be community-minded, and in doing that, I want you to do three things. Number one, build relationships that were never built. Number two, improve the good relationships we have. Number three, repair relationships that were broken. So as you go about your day, keep in mind that everything you do, every decision you make, the way you engage and speak with our citizens and our visitors, the way you handle their concerns, that you perform every part of your job in a way that either builds new relationships, improves good ones, and repairs bad ones. And always remember, always remember, that right is right, even when nobody is doing it. And wrong is wrong, even when everybody is doing it. Thank you, God bless you, congratulations. And welcome to the new Baltimore Police Department. Commissioner Harrison for those kind words. At this time to deliver the class address, call to the podium officer Raphael Orellana. I would like to welcome Commissioner Harrison, class of 1803, and all our loved ones that are sharing in our special occasion. Special thanks to our advisors, Sergeant Lipsey, Officer Long, Officer Marvel, Officer Gary, and Officer Berard. You had to deal with me for nine months, and for that, you deserve the Medal of Honor. <laughs> Without you all, I wouldn't have made it out of EVOC alive. Learn the proper tricep takedown, and learn to, start to stay away from Paco Pico. <laughs> I would also like to thank our law instructors, Ms. Miles and Mr. Baber. You both do a spectacular job in preparing us for our careers. And for that, we thank you. Ms. Miles, again, I'm sorry for asking questions about the next slide, but you just made law so interesting. <laughs> All of our BPD instructors made it their mission to equip us for our careers. It won't be easy for us from now on, and the media is a constant reminder of how tough our jobs will be. Despite Baltimore being a rough city, I've had many positive interactions with the citizens of Baltimore. Thanks to a wonderful program called Project NUMA, I was able to interact with the city's youths. They've been a handful some days, but I, I think I've made some lifelong friends, and I hope that I help change their mind about the police in the city. I've also had the privilege of working with three first-rate Baltimore school police officers. They have, they have a tough job since they exclusively deal with the city's youths, but I believe that the school system is getting three first-rate people as well as officers. I know we've had our growing pains and frustrated each other in the past nine months, but at the end of the day, we were family and we stayed close. I look forward to serving our community with each and every one of you, and I believe Baltimore City is getting 26 extraordinary officers joining their ranks. It won't be easy, but we're all up for the task. And before I go, I have two things. Sergeant Livesey, say it with me, Oriana. <laughs> and one last time, class of 1803, fair, fair is fair. Thank you also, Rafael Orlana. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker this evening. Uh, the Most Reverend William E. Laurie, Archbishop of Baltimore. Thank you very much, very young. Commissioner Harrison, State's Attorney Mosby, commanders, and our newest police officers, the class of 1803. 
congratulations. And along with you, I want to thank your spouses, your families, and your loved ones. They are in this with you, and we thank you abundantly for your support and for your love, because these 26 great new officers would not be here without you. Let's give all of them a very, very, very hand. The commissioner said it so well. You did not just sign up for a job. You did not just sign up for a nine to five occupation. You signed up for a vocation, a calling, a calling to community service, a calling to serve the common good, a calling to serve our beloved city of Baltimore at, at what is not an easy time, but a difficult time. You are here to make a critical difference, and for that, I surely do thank you. If you want to know the kind of vocation, the kind of calling you've said yes to, let us think about those who are being honored this afternoon, those who are receiving meritorious awards for saving the lives of others, for saving the lives of the innocent, and for putting their lives in harm's way in order to do so. So you've come aboard to enforce laws, to enforce just laws that help knit us together as a cohesive and a peaceful society. But you are not merely doing law enforcement, important and necessary as that is. You are not merely serving your own individual interests. You are here to serve the common good, to build community relations, and to build trust in all of our neighborhoods, including the neighborhoods that are most challenged. In your vocation, in your work that requires you to put everything on the line, you're going to need support. It's like my vocation. I can't do it alone, and you can't do it alone. I don't know your faith backgrounds, but I hope that you will rely on the good God who loves us so much, whose power and strength can work in us, and through us, and who gives us the wisdom and virtue that you need and that I need to do our jobs well, to be for others, to serve others, and to build up those community relations that are so critical. Faith in God, prayer, it is so very important. And there's many others, as you know so well, out of the community who really want you to succeed. There's many people doing all kinds of nonprofit services out of the community, and we have a wonderful, diverse faith community across the city of Baltimore that is only too happy to work side by side with you to ensure not only your success, but the success of our beloved city and its citizens, including those who are most vulnerable and most disadvantaged. Bottom line is, you are doing something noble, generous, and something that is wonderful. I ask that God bless you in the years ahead. I ask that through your example and your the strength and your virtue on the job, you will attract many others just like you to join this force. And I pray that God will bless you and keep you always in his love. Thank you very, very much.
Thank you, Archbishop Flory. Ladies and gentlemen, we reached a part of the ceremony where we choose to recognize individuals in the class who have excelled in certain parts of training. These men and women have worked extremely hard over the last 38s, but some of them stood out more, a little bit more than others, and we want to take this time to recognize and appreciate that effort. The first award is for academic excellence. This is presented to the class member with the overall highest academic average. The Academic Excellent Award for Class 2018-03 is presented to an officer with an overall average of 93.4, Officer Raphael Orellana. The next award, we recognize the skills champion. This award is presented to the member with the highest average placement in the categories of defense tactics, physical training, and emergency vehicle operation. The skills champion for class 2018-03 with an average of 90.8 is Officer Ryan Wagner. The next award is for the Firearms Champion Award. This is presented to the member of the highest overall average for the firearms training. The Firearms Champion for Class 2018-03 with an average of 99.4 is Officer William Rojas. The next award we would like to present the Commissioner's Award of Excellence. This award is based upon academic achievement, professionalism, attitude, appearance, and the ability to supervise. Those are the characteristics that comprise the professional police officer. The training staff selects this member who most closely reflects these attributes. The Police Commissioner's Award of Excellence for 2018-03 is awarded to Officer Rafael Orellana. The next award is the Cassidy Award. On October the 22nd, 1987, Agent Cassidy approached a person he believed had committed an assault. While conducting an interview, the subject drew a weapon and fired. Agent Cassidy was wounded and blinded as a result of his injury. He chose not to become a victim that night. He returned to York College, earned a second degree in education, and he has since earned a master's degree from John Hopkins University. Agent Cassidy returned to the Baltimore Police Department where he continues to still to this day serving as an academic instructor. This award is presented to the member who has demonstrated an unwavering commitment to professionalism and ability to motivate and inspire others. Members of the class selects this individual. This is the first time, ladies and gentlemen, that we've had two recipients for this award. The first one is Officer Roberto Rodriguez. <laughs> Thank you.
second recipient is Officer Jalik Mathis. the Director's Award. The Director's Leadership Award is awarded to the member of the class who has shown outstanding leadership quality. The class commander is assigned a daunting task of leading their class in all aspects of the academy, from when they first arrive at the training academy until they graduate. In recognition of his tireless and unwavering dedication to his class, the Director's Award goes to Officer Ryan Montgomery. introduce to you the Chief of Public Information, Chief Matt Jablo. Thank you, Captain Brown. Good evening, everybody. I consider myself very fortunate to be part of today's graduation ceremony, the first ceremony of what is truly a new and better era for the Baltimore Police Department. In just a minute, I'll read the names of the graduates and invite them to come on stage, but first, I'd like to offer them a bit of advice. I'm expecting great things from this class. We all are. I have no doubt that you will have long, productive, and meaningful careers as Baltimore police officers. I'm even imagining that one day you will be up on this stage and speaking during one of our ceremonies. When that day comes, here's my advice. Try as hard as you possibly can not to be positioned in the order of speakers after the eloquent Archbishop and Mayor of our great city, or most importantly, after a commissioner who has been described as a cross between LeBron James and Superman, <laughs> and who has built a very successful career crafting words of inspiration, encouragement, and motivation. Unfortunately, that's the position I find myself in tonight. So to help out my presentation, to give it a little more buzz, I got an old friend of Commissioner Harrison who might be a familiar face to many of you to record a message. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Wendell Pierce, the actor. But you probably know me as one more, the fictional homicide detective of the Baltimore Police Department on the wire. I played a cop on TV, but you're the real deal. And I want to come here today to congratulate you. You see, Baltimore became a very special place for me. It has a very special place in my heart. But New Orleans is my first home. And that's where I met your chief, Chief Harrison. He's a good cop, a cop cop, and a great leader. So you're very fortunate to have him lead you. But I wanted to make sure to come here on your graduating day and thank you for your service, for your commitment, your perseverance. You join now this long blue line of fraternal order of men and women who will serve the great city of Baltimore for many years to come. So thank you all for becoming the newest members of the Baltimore Police Department. I wish you well. Congratulations and great service. I couldn't have said it better myself, which is why I asked Wendell to say it for me. Now on to the reason many of you, many of us, are here tonight. Class, open, hoop, covers, two. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings us to the part of our program long sought but well earned. Class 1803 will officially transition from the classroom to the field. 
Commissioner Harrison, it's my honor to present to you Class 1803. Class, Roy, I am now requesting the certificates of graduation. James Ball. Orhan Byler. <laughs> Curtis Bogus. Bria Bowling. Yeah. <laughs> Terrell Dantzler. <laughs> Charles Deal <laughs> Henry Ekendayo Jr. Chase Evans. <laughs> Fernando Gavilano. Cody Hastings Hamilton. <laughs> Anthony Jetter. Tania Jones. DeWarren Lambert. I think we have a winner.
Evan Lockwood. on this next one, the name nobody can pronounce. Rafael Oriana. Did I get it? Yes, good job, sir. Thank you. Andretti Polanco.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I want to recognize some of our honored guests that's with us this evening. First of all, the U.S. Attorney for the State of Maryland, Rob Herb. Our newest Deputy Commissioner, Daniel Murphy. The Chief of Baltimore City School Police, Akili Ham. And the State's Attorney for Baltimore City, Marilyn Mosby. So ladies and gentlemen, we reach the most important part of the ceremony, the oath of office. Class, raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I. I. James Ball. Orhan Bailey. Rafael Oriana. Jalik Met. Roy Montgomery. Roberto Rodriguez. Curtis Bogus. Bria Bowling. Terrell Dance. Charles Deal. Rohan Boy. Ryan Wagner. Henry Kadai. Jake Evans. Fernando Gavilano. Cody Hastings Hills. Anthony Jetter. Sania Jones. Dewan Lambert. Yeah. Evan Lockwood. Corey Lust. Do it, Moy! Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will be faithful. And that I will be faithful. And bear true allegiance. And bear true allegiance. To the state of Maryland. And bear true allegiance and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the constitutions and laws of thereof. And support the constitutions and laws thereof. And I will to the best of my skill. And I will to the best of my skill. And judgment. And judgment. Diligently and without partiality or prejudice. Diligently and without partiality or prejudice. Execute the office of law enforcement officer. Execute the office of law enforcement officer. According to the constitution and laws of this state. According to the constitution and laws of this state. Outstanding. Order. Who? Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege to present to you Class 1803. service board award winners. Oftentimes in the news media we hear negative things about law enforcement in general. Tonight we have some of our heroic officers being recognized for their acts they perform in our community every day. The first award winners are the Medal of Honor, Silver Star, Bronze Star, and Accommodation. On March the 24th, officers were called to a residence for an armed subject who had barricaded himself inside of that location where he held two young children captive. The suspect was armed with a large knife. Sergeant Slavinsky, who was the midnight shift commander, and his squad responded to the scene and initiated hostage protocol rescue. The patrol officers who assisted Sergeant Selesky was Officer Willis Eggleston, Officer Morales, Officer Varner, Officer Flame, Officer Gonzalez, and Officer Nichols. Officer Morales initiated hostage negotiation tactics and was successfully in preventing the suspect from immediately acting on his threats to harm the children. Shortly after patrol officers responded, SWAT officers were contacting and continued the negotiations and attempts with the suspect to release the children. Recognizing that there was no further actions that could suffice to calm the situation, Officer Wynn quickly and accurately decide upon a course of action to use deadly force to incapacitate the suspect as he held a deadly knife to one of the children. After Officer Wynn engaged the suspect, Sergeant Della Rocco and Officer Morales immediately rushed in and rescued the children. SWAT Commander Lieutenant DeVita and Sergeant Della Rocco 
expertly assisted the situa situation and led Officer Wynn in his duties and assisted with negotiation tactics. All officers displayed exceptional execution of their duty in the face of extreme danger, and their collective efforts was the reason why those two children were saved. The first award recipient for the Medal of Offer, uh, Honor, Officer Zachary Wynn. Officer Lewis Gonzalez. <laughs> Awarded accommodation, Officer Donald Flame. award is for Silver Star. On December the 15th, 2017, Officer Lippy was on routine patrol when he observed a vehicle that was recently involved in a shooting. He initiated a traffic stop to attempt to conduct an investigation along with Officer Jackson, who responded to assist him. During the investigation attempt, the driver of the vehicle suddenly sped off in an attempt to evade the officers. Officer Lippy and Jackson followed the vehicle during the pursuit. The suspect began firing a gun haphazardly out the window of the vehicle at the officers. During the incident, several victims were shot by, by the suspect. He was subsequently apprehended and two weapons were recovered from the vehicle. The suspect later confessed to committing several shootings in Baltimore City and stated that he wanted to shoot as many drug dealers as he could find. Both officers displayed bravery and the presence of mind in the face of extreme danger. Their efforts helped to remove a violent offender from the city of Baltimore. Awarded the Silver Star, Officer Philip Lippi.
awarded the Silver Star, Officer Aaron Jackson. February 6, 2018, Officer Shelley, Parrish, and Colburn, Sergeant Colburn, were patrolling an area known for violent crime. While patrolling, they witnessed an unidentified suspect firing a handgun at a victim during an armed robbery attempt. The officers immediately engaged the armed suspect who fled on foot. The officers pursued the suspect and later apprehended him a short distance away. He subsequently was charged with attempt murder. The victim was treated for his injuries at the University of Maryland shock trauma. Due to their heroic acts, Sergeant Colburn, Officer Shelley, and Officer Parrish were able to subdue the violent suspect without further endangering the lives of others. Awarded the Bronze Star, Sergeant David Colburn. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Colburn couldn't be here with us this evening. We'll accept this award on his behalf. Uh, the recipient of the Bronze Star, Officer Luke Shelley. for the Bronze Star and Accommodation Award. On November the 5th, 2016, Officer Florio and Sergeant Fraser responded to an in-progress domestic violence call. The officers arrived at the residence and located a male and female engaged in a heated argument. As the officers attempted to de-escalate the situation, the male subject assumed a defensive stance and began reaching for an object concealed inside of his pocket. Displaying outstanding ability and presence of mind, Officer Florio and Sergeant Frazier quickly sprung into action, grabbing the suspect's hand as he attempted to pull out a semi-automatic handgun. After a brief struggle, the suspects were taken into custody and the weapon was recovered. It was later revealed that the suspect was a prior violent offender who had an extensive criminal history involving the use of firearms. Officer Florio and Sergeant Frazier quick and decisive actions prevented the suspect from inflicting any further threat to the officers, the victim, and her daughter. Awarded accommodation, Sergeant Jerry Frazier. Christopher Florio. This time, I would like to invite Archbishop Laurie up for a closing benediction. Command, class, detail, button, poof! Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. And let us pray. Lord God, ruler of the universe, you are the source of all the goodness we reflect and accomplish. We give you thanks and praise for these women and men who are themselves grandchildren, sons and daughters, fathers and mothers, sisters and brothers, cousins and friends. Bless them and give them the courage of your abiding presence, inspire in them a spirit of compassion, understanding, empathy, and love. Grant them strength, perseverance, and your protection in all they do. And you alone, we hope, 
In you alone we place our trust, now and always and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Command, class, detail, cover, two. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the conclusion of today's program. Thank you for coming to see us.